welcome to my channel my name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review today's fountain pen can be found all over Amazon Etsy and eBay hyped as a luxury writing instrument and a terrific gift for the writer or artist it is the Woodsworth and black bamboo fountain pen in this wonderful gift box this pen is on loan from pen friend Janice Butterworth and I'm the first one to use it Thank you, Janice, for the extended loan of your new pen. Wordsworth and Black are a company based in the UK that sell writing instruments, fountain pens, rollerballs, and ballpoints, as well as a very nice array of paper from notepads to journals. They have a very sophisticated website that offers free shipping to the USA, but unfortunately, even though they display products in Canadian dollars for me, they don't ship to Canada. But that's okay because I found them on Etsy where they have the same products. So let's inquire as to whether Wordsworth and Black's fountain pen has a writing experience to match the elegance and sophistication their marketing and advertising seems to indicate, shall we? Right now. <music> Wordsworth and Black's Crest Collection bamboo fountain pens inspire you to reach for the crest of your imagination. Detailed craftsmanship ensures a smooth, effortless writing experience, the finest in poetry, movement, and design. Crafted with a range of innovative finishes with a classical yet contemporary beauty, these wooden fountain pens deliver a timeless appeal. What a raw frog! We use only the finest baby frogs, dew-picked and flown from Iraq, cleansed in the finest quality spring water, lightly killed and sealed in a succulent Swiss with pupil smooth, full cream, treble milk chocolate envelope, and lovingly frosted with glucose. Well, don't even take the bones out. If we took the bones out, it wouldn't be crunchy, would it? <laughs> Constable Parrot ate one of those. And what I like to do today is go over the parts and features of this pen, show some size comparisons, some measurements, and then provide a writing sample. After the writing sample, please stay tuned as I will talk about what I like and what I don't like so much about this pen. As I said in the introduction, this pen is on loan from pen friend Janice. She loaned it to me without even having tried it. There's trust for you. Janice tells me she only received the pen and the box, not the other things indicated in this photo, which are the six ink cartridges, three blue and three black, as well as the documentation and the warranty information. Some of the Amazon reviews on this product also mention that the customer did not get all these items, so buyer beware. The pen came in this lovely wooden box, which in itself is a lovely gift and presentation item. And here is the pen. It is a very slim fountain pen in a light brown wood finish with gold hardware. That's gold metal, not gold. This model, called the Luxury Bamboo Wood, is also available in a blonde and dark brown version. These are all the same wood, bamboo but the light and dark brown versions just have stain applied. Bamboo, as most people know, is a very light, almost white, soft wood. The pen feels very light in the hand for a pen made of brass and wood. From the top, we see a dark gray, almost pewter looking heavy metal finial that has a very slight point milled into it on top. This is a bit of oddness right here. Not only is it a relatively heavy hardware piece, it doesn't match the rest of the pen at all. All this light brown wood and gold colored metal hardware and then this gray black top finial. Strange choices here. Then we see a gold colored metal clip in a very pleasant and sturdy teardrop style which is stiff but usable. The stylized w and logo is laser etched to the top of the clip nowhere near the center of the clip. Is that quality control or is this an asymmetrical design statement since all of the other photos available of this model have the logo centered on the clip I'll assume that this is a quality control issue the cap is straight until a wide 
gold colored cap band. The ending edge of the band is smooth, but the seam between the wood and the cap band itself is a little bit sharp to the touch. And so is this groove that's uh, milled into this band and filled with black paint. Those edges are relatively sharp. There is a slight step down to the barrel, which tapers away until we get to a beveled gold ring which is slightly proud here and definitely feels sharp. And then another step down to this short barrel shaped end finial section. This step down to the straight cylinder end finial accommodates the posting of the cap, which we will see shortly. Then there is this T-shaped flat gold metal hardware on the end of the finial. It looks like a failed attempt at a lanyard attachment point. The wide and deep channel serves no practical purpose as it does not click to post. Plus, now that I've traveled down the length of the pen, the design critic lurking in my lizard brain is squirming now. What am I looking at? It's a bit of a dog's breakfast of design elements to this designer's eye. We have the dark gray heavy flat top finial, the teardrop gold clip, straight cap, wide gold band with center channel black stripe, a tapered barrel and then a beveled gold band followed by a straight barrel extension with that t-shaped flat end finial my lizard brain just screams uh, well well it just screams actually in artistic terms we designers call this really bad it would be bad I'm fuzzy on the whole good bad thing what do you mean bad Try to imagine all life as you know it stopping instantaneously and every molecule in your body exploding at the speed of light. All right, that's bad. Okay, all right, important safety tip. Thanks, Egon. Of course, your mileage may vary. It might actually fit your decor consisting of Danish modern mixed with American colonial. The cap snaps off to reveal a very thin but long black plastic section and number five size steel nib. The step down from the barrel to the section is rather large and the edge of this gold ring uh, right here is sharp. The section tapers down to another gold band uh, that has a raised lip towards the end. Let's get a closer look at this nib. It is two-toned with some scroll work and the words Genius Iridium Germany. I'm not sure which part is the genius, although I'm willing to bet good money it isn't the design team. I'm also not sure whether the nib is from Germany or just the iridium. We've seen an awful lot of this kind of generic steel nib from pens made in China. I have no doubt this entire pen was made in China. The Wordsworth and Black website says, all of our hand-assembled magnificent pens are designed with meticulous attention to every detail in the UK and delivered worldwide. This is careful marketing text that says the pens are designed in the UK and doesn't specify where they are hand-assembled. Obviously the meticulous attention to design details missed the mismatched parts from the island of misfit pens. But I digress. The section unscrews and there is the supplied standard international converter. Again with all the hallmarks of an inexpensive Chinese origin. I wouldn't lose this converter though as it is not generic. It is very slim to fit the narrow channel inside the barrel. The pen will accept standard international cartridges but it won't accept two cartridges piggybacked inside the barrel. Inside of the cap shows a black plastic sleeve inner liner into which is milled a small step that I assume meets up with the end of the section. This is a good choice here as wood is very porous and will allow moisture to escape. If that moisture is blue or black 
so will your cap be blue or black eventually. The cap posts securely but without the expected click. Why make this funky T-shaped end finial and not have it click to post? I don't know. Also because of the heavy black cap finial, the cap now severely back weights this pen when it's posted. In the hand, the pen is light and thin. You will need delicate hands to hold this pen comfortably. Given smaller hands, this pen would feel very nicely balanced unposted and it's plenty long enough. The pen retails for around $25 US and is available on Amazon, Etsy, eBay, and if you are in the US or UK on the Wordsworth and Black website. They also have a nice array of notebooks and journals sporting 120 GSM weight fountain pen friendly paper. I tried to buy one from their website but was rebuffed with a message that said my country was ineligible for shipping even though the website converted everything to Canadian dollars for me. I did find the Wordsworth and Black store on Etsy, however, where they ship the products from the U.S. instead of the U.K. One of the comments there said it shipped from the U.S. to the U.K. very quickly. I would suggest it might be even faster if you're in the U.K. to purchase it from the WNB U.K. website. But the journals look really nice and even come with pen loops. Now let's look at some size comparisons. And here we are with the Wordsworth and Black Luxury Bamboo Wood Fountain Pen. And here it is with a Lee Valley Tools Pen Kit turned by Michelle Paquette, a Schaefer Targa, a Parker 45, and a Pilot Metropolitan. Now let's look at them posted. And here they are posted. And I've put the Lee Valley Tools pen in here to compare it because the nibs are almost identical. The section, even though this one's gold, is the same kind of size and shape. This one's a little bit longer, but uh, they're the same narrowness. And of course the Schaefer Targa is a very slim pen, but shows you what you can do when you post the pen nice and deep. And the slimline pen becomes something manageable. The Parker 45, of course, is the shortest of the group when it's posted. Posts probably more beautifully than almost any other pen I've seen. Now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Clairefontaine 90 GSM paper, and this is the Wordsworth and Black Luxury Bamboo Wood Fountain Pen with a medium steel nib. And the ink today is Hiroshizuku Takaisumi. It's my favorite black ink. Here's the swatch for the Takaisumi. Takaisumi. I don't know how to pronounce that. Along with Hero Black and some J. Urbain Stormy Grey. The Stormy Grey has some really cool gold fleck that I'm finding it uh, is sticking in most of my pens. Uh, so I'm f looking for a pen that this is going to work for for me to put it in. Let's check the wetness on this pen. As you can see it is very wet. This is right out of the box. I've not done anything to this nib. As to line variation, there's a none to be had. This is a very stiff nib. Comparing this line to my Richard Binder chart, it comes out at 0.6 millimeters or a Western 
medium or a Japanese medium to broad. And for our writing sample, and for some reverse writing. That's actually very smooth, uh, very thin. It is a lot drier, but uh, you are getting some line variation by turning the nib over. As a sketch artist, Janice is going to love this nib for its versatility. And some quick writing. You can see that feed keeps up very, very nicely indeed. So, what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen? I have numerous pet peeves about this fountain pen, but I'm going to start and end with the biggest like about it, and that is the nib. No issues, no scratch, no misalignment, and no micro mesh or flossing required. It writes smooth and wet. That is job number one, isn't it? It takes a standard cartridge and comes in a very attractive gift box with ink and warranty, if you're lucky. Be careful what you wish for, punk. That alone, I think, warrants the $25 US price tag. The pen itself, uh, not so much. As I said earlier, this is a dog's breakfast of a design. That's strange. All of a sudden, I don't quite feel like myself. And as a designer, it hurts my brain. Talk about going over the top, man. This guy should be arrested for overacting. The overall fit and finish leave much to be desired with sharp edges here and there, and the balance of the pen when it's posted is way off. The luxurious bamboo wood is far from luxurious. This wood used by Michelle in this Lee Valley pen kit is ancient bog oak and is in fact luxurious the bamboo is well it's bamboo it's relatively soft i could actually dent it with my fingernail and yeah i know i have substantial fingernails but don't put this pen in your mouth or it would end up looking like a chewed hb pencil ralph are you eating your paste no Good. But in the end, this may well be a nice gift item, as the marketing hype says, for graduation, birthday, or a Christmas gift. The presentation is very nice, and the pen actually writes. If you have any issues, Woodsworth and Black have a substantial website and web store, as well as a warranty and customer service. Yes, their pens are rebranded Chinese pens, but they've done a good job at providing some value-added support and merchandise to complement their writing instruments. And there you have it. Thanks again to Janice Butterworth for the loan of the pen for review. And if you liked this video, don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote. I made this.